Good, over. Roger, copy. This project invited me to actually look at the world and not on elements of the world, like I used to look at countries or, you know, particular culture. Um, trying to take a really zoom out perspective. The story of humanity is art, that's it. And NASA digs it, they get it, and that's why they want to do it in space. My name is Yael Geber, I'm an artist. So for me, I use technology as a new way to tell my stories as a contemporary artist. My palette is really using and developing my own proprietary engines that then I use to create physical 3D simulations of collisions, explosions, liquids splashing, and I use 3D printers to fabricate this particular moment. And when you look at the sculpture, you feel as if time is frozen. Al Gaver does this amazing art that is, you know, in some ways already inspired by the notion of zero gravity. It's hard to believe that it can even exist the way you're looking at it. And we start asking him, what would you do if you could build art in zero gravity? I was approached by NASA. They invited me to do the first piece of art in space. And the reason was they created a, a new kind of a printer, a 3D printer that can print in th zero gravity. That was a big deal for me. I mean, just. How do you create a, a, a first sculpture in space? Made in Space was founded back in 2010 with the idea that people should be living in space now. We're all kind of frustrated that the space industry isn't moving as fast as we think it could. And we focus on those problems that allow us to actually start colonizing space. I want to design a future where we thrive in space. And thriving in space is a lot more than just sending the people and the technology to keep them alive. It's about sending the culture and what it means to be human. What you see here now through the windows, this is where I'm printing my sculptures. Each printer can print over a meter. It's a UV process. When the resin is exposed to the UV light, it solidifies. And the resolution is extremely, extremely detailed. So it enables me both to print really large objects as well as intricate and high, high resolution. sort of uh, capable of understanding cutting-edge technology, being expressive with it, knowing design and art, what was before. It's kind of this interwined, this relationship between really core technology and art itself. I've been pushing this envelope for the last 10 years. For me, art needs to be the reflection of the time that the artist is alive, as well as to push the art language forward. NASA released in the 70s the golden record where they, they burned into the record many, many uh, elements like music, um, language, all sorts of human cultural things. What they explain to me is that as a global entity, culture is important to them. Art is a big part of that. They have a responsibility for humanity. They are a major force of our progress as humans. Everything man-made that's ever been in space started here on the surface of planet Earth. And it requires a lot of energy to get things off the planet. The goal was 3D printer on the space station because astronauts will use it to build tools and spare parts and when they have an emergency, they can fix it. But at the same time, Made in Space wants anybody on the planet to use this 3D printer and enable anyone on Earth to use space way faster than before. Which was what I was telling at the you know, one of the areas that we are excited a lot about is the area of art and how we can design new types of art that maybe we can't even bring back to Earth because we're building 
a sculpture that wouldn't even survive in gravity. Something that I never predicted became a, of importance was what's the subject matter of the piece of art, taking into consideration that I should believe in as an artist, as well as a worthy piece of art that can represent humanity. And I came up with the idea, how about making a shout out to space using sound sculpture. I kept on thinking about the sound sculpture for space and I realized, you know, maybe I shouldn't even think about using a person or a certain language that has political connotation or uh, culture or time or race. And then a friend of mine said, why won't you do a human laughter? And I said, wow, you're so right. We all laugh. <laughs> And space is so quiet, and just, you know, creating a sculpture that encapsulates a human laughter, and mathematically you can always go and decipher the spectrogram of the laughter. So it's almost like a frozen laughter in space. We invite people to go to a line, and they can record their laughter, and then actually the wisdom of the crowd would actually choose which of the laughter they want to send to space to represent humanity. And so in a computer, we can create the simulation of what that laughter sounds like and turning it into the three-dimensional object. That then we can 3D print in space and it will exist there. It'll be the sound of humanity in a way. To me, it's iconic, like the first pen, you know, painting in the cave. <laughs> Main challenges are A, you're doing something in space. This is a very bleeding edge. Technology. For example, the project being delayed a few times because once the rocket that was supposed to get to the space shuttle with supply exploded on the way. There could be um, asteroid storms that can delay the project. Other than that, hey, it's just making a sculpture in space. It's not that hard. Good radar data. Everything looking good. Altitude 4200. Go for landing. Over. very intellectually challenging and, and exciting to try to forget about the fundamental issues we have as humans and how we fuck up the world and how we fight one another and the whole bad things that we as humanity do and elevate to, on the other hand, that we are amazing creatures and we're doing amazing things and look where we got. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.